You know, it was a nice community, it was a safe community. Then all of a sudden, somebody drops the ball, makes a mistake, and we're all paying for it. It's been 103 days since the Sanford and Edenville Dames failed in Midland County. 103 days since hell broke loose. The flooding destroyed some 150 homes, left more than $200 million in damage, and set back this community untold years. I had a friend's house that was just this side of the Curtis Road Bridge. It's not damaged. It's gone. Joe Manellis and his wife have lived on Sanford Lake for 30 years. They're among the lucky ones. While they sustained thousands in damage, their home is still standing. Walking through town today, so much of it looks like empty fields. But look closely and you'll be reminded that homes once stood here. I mean, it's like you took an eraser and scrubbed it off the face of the earth. It was, there's no debris there. There's not enough wood on that lot to build a doghouse. We were about a quarter mile from where the Sanford Dam failed. This was a neighborhood. It's all gone. That home you see over there, it wasn't there to begin with. The flood put it there. This was once a baseball field. All that's left today is a scoreboard. Sinkholes dot town streets, some have completely collapsed. But Sanford Dam is still standing, along with a log jam of docks and boats, even propane tanks that would take weeks to clear. But the 1,300 acre lake that brought so many to this part of the state, this is what it looked like before the dams failed, and this is what it looks like today. Before the dams collapsed, Sanford Lake ran almost 30 feet deep. Today, you can practically walk across it. I mean, how often have you just walked through here? I've been out there a couple, three times. Where there was once water is now just vegetation. Plants and poplar trees are beginning to grow, and in a few years, this could look like a forest. Water was probably five to six feet up here. But building back what's been lost could take years. Michael Knapp lived in his new home on Sanford Lake for just 13 months before the floods came. The damage was so severe that he knocked it down and is building it again today. Uh, there was a bedroom in that corner, a den in this corner. Because the homes here weren't in a floodplain, most everyone didn't have flood insurance. That means repairing or rebuilding will come out of their pocket. Center Street felt more like a war zone than a downtown. Ray Bowers has lived here since 1974. The flood leveled his business and nearly destroyed his home. And where are you living now? Travel trailer. For three months? Yep. The wall's gone, furnace, hot water heater, and you gotta depend on getting the money from other sources and because Obviously, I'm kind of out of a job right now. His job was running R&R &R auto sales. But today, there are no cars to sell. His building is nearly collapsed, and a life's work has been washed away. Someday I was going to sell this, that, my house, and that was going to be my retirement. Well, it looks like retirement just went away, and there's no way to get it back. It's anyone's guess when lake levels would return to something even remotely normal, no one we talked to would even give an estimate. Until that time, those who can afford to will rebuild. We're in Sanford tonight. I'm Ross Jones, 7 Action News.